Hello and welcome to the next episode of my tutorial series, Subtractive Synthesis on Various Synthesizers. So far we've discussed the trajectory for the series, we've spent some time looking at oscillators on a modular synthesizer, we've looked at the mixer on a base station 2, and today we're going to look at the filter section on the Korg Volker keys. So. Let me first point out the sections on this synthesizer in the same way as I have previously. This is the oscillator section, but is actually also the mixer section. This is something of a simplified synthesizer, so we don't have dedicated pitch control for the oscillators to tune them, and we don't have a way of controlling their relative volume. Instead, we have a set of voicing modes available to us, Similarly, we don't have a selection of wave shapes, we only have two, and um, one of them is only available in specific circumstances. Instead of individual tuning, we have a detune knob. The next section here is the filter. Then, as I mentioned, the VCA is not listed, but here is the envelope generator. Here is the LFO section, and finally here is the effect section. So let us start by trying to put together a basic sound. So let's think about what type of sound we want to make. I think it might be interesting to try and make a bass sound. So a bass sound. But how do we start? Well this synthesizer does not have patch memory and therefore I'm going to create the init patch here. So I'm going to turn down the delay, I'm going to turn down the attack and decay, up the sustain, turn the LFO down, open the cutoff, turn the modulations here down, memento pitch. Okay, so now this, if I did these things correctly, And I believe I did, is playing a saw wave alone. So one oscillator is not necessarily very interesting. This synthesizer has a feature called paraphonic mode where it actually has three oscillators. So I can actually play chords here, but that's not the purpose of this episode. So I'm not going to use the poly mode. We're going to explore the other modes. First is unison. So what unison means is all of the oscillators get tuned to the same pitch, all three of them, and we use the detune knob to spread that pitch. So you can hear, it gives us a more interesting sound. The next one is octave. So in this case we have one of the oscillators tuned an octave above the rest. I can also detune. Next mode is fifth, similar to the previous, but the detune is a fifth. So far, thinking about a bass sound, um, I'm probably most happy with uh, the octave, but we'll keep moving. So this one is using a square wave instead of a saw wave, and it's ring modulating. So listen to the detune. So we get that very clear pulsing happening in the sound. Next one is poly ring. This is a little bit confusing. So this is ring modulating the oscillators against one another, but there are three oscillators and they can be played on the keyboard. So there's some very unusual sounds that can be achieved there, not very easy to play on this keyboard. So as I mentioned, the raw sound that I was probably happiest with for a bass was the octave. Remember that last episode I mentioned footage, as in how long pipes are on a pipe organ. There's a limited range of keyboard available, so rather than 
a traditional transpose, you can adjust the footage of the oscillator. So we want a bass sound, so I've moved this all the way down to the bass. So now this has effectively handled the mixer for us and has handled the oscillator section for us. So finally, we're on to the filter. What controls do we have available to us? Well, we haven't talked about envelopes yet, so I'm not going to use this bottom knob, but there are two up here. The cutoff represents the frequency above which other frequencies get attenuated. So when you turn this down, you will hear the sound getting less bright. So let me illustrate. So the buzz is tamed by subtracting harmonics. And this is what subtractive synthesis refers to. We use a waveform which has a lot of buzz, a lot of upper harmonics. And then we use a filter to tame those harmonics, to change the timbre that we have. And combining that with the other features we'll go into, like the envelopes through the VCA and the filter, and we can reach a range of different tones. So let's see what this peak knob does. Now, I will note that what is called peak here is often referred to as resonance on another synthesizer. It's a type of feedback, and that feedback causes any pitch at the cutoff frequency set by the cutoff knob to be emphasized and to be made louder. So what this means then is when I play a note and I turn that knob with the emphasis turned up, we're going to hear a fixed pitch from the note that I was playing and a sweeping of this other frequency. So I'm going to turn the resonance relatively high to really accentuate that. So you can hear almost like a, a vowel sound happening here. And the reason is that what makes a vowel sound sound like a vowel is called a formant. And a formant is a pitch component in your um, speech, which remains fixed irrespective of the rest of the pitch. So that's what the formant is. So what's happening is the note you're playing is functioning as the formant and the resonance is acting as the rest of the pitch sweep of your voice. So that's giving us this vowel sound. So let's, let's explore that a little bit. I think it's a little excessive at the moment, but let's turn it up just to hear it. Okay, so I've turned it down a bit. So now we have our raw tone the raw tone that we achieved by combining the oscillators, in this case in a relatively simplistic manner, and we mixed them again in a relatively simplistic manner. Now, let's think about detuning them a little bit. So you can hear that in detuning, we've added a lot of additional complexity to the sound, but that's too punchy for a bass sound. It's going to sit poorly in the mix because it has so much of the upper harmonics. So now I'm going to tame those upper harmonics with a filter. So I think you'll agree that we have something that sounds like quite a, a strong, powerful bass sound from a very simplistic sound design approach on a very simplistic synthesizer. I'm going to attempt to play it. This little touch keyboard, I guess you can see my hands for scale, is small and not very easy to play on, but it is usable. Uh, I didn't want to introduce an external controller if I could avoid it. so. It is what it is. So let me experiment playing a little and using the cutoff to add some expression.
Okay, so hopefully that's given you a little feel for what a filter does. In other synthesizers, the filter may not be a low pass filter. You may have access to a high pass filter. What a high pass filter does is instead of removing the upper harmonics above the cutoff frequency, it removes the lower harmonics. Sometimes you'll hear a low pass referred to as a high cut and a high pass referred to as a low cut. There are two other common filter types here. One of them is a band pass. A band pass is going to eliminate or attenuate frequencies both above and below the cutoff that we set. And finally, a notch filter is going to attenuate around the cutoff frequency, but not elsewhere. So I hope that that's given you a feel for subtractive synthesis and what the filter does and its function and giving you an understanding of how even a simple subtractive synth has the capacity to produce some interesting sounds and hopefully some sounds that you could imagine using in your own music. So I hope you come back and watch the rest of the videos in this series. I hope you enjoyed watching this one. Thank you and goodbye.